$50 for 500, that represents a 10% return on investment, you know, by the end of this week, which is far better than what the S&P um, is going to probably do for that month. That's what the S&P does for, you know, a year. Hey guys, what's up? It's your boy, Bobby JJ, AK Swaggy Sarvi. And I'm subbing in for Yankee Sam today to talk about investing and in particular, investing with options and the strategy we're going to discuss today is theta gang the inspiration behind this video is bobby schmerta being released from jail <laughs> about a week ago baby <laughs> so what is theta gang well data in particular for an option revolves around the time decay of you know that option it represents how much value the option will lose you know, as each day progresses. So let's take an example of this. Um, let's look at the stock of Apple um, and let's look at the $125 call option. In this case, the option has a value of negative uh, 0.25 and the option value is $1.79. So each day, each day that the stock of Apple does not go up or down, this option will lose 25 cents. We want to look at, we want to look at options with high data value and we want to take advantage of them. And those are typically going to be options that expire soon. So options that expire, you know, in six months, in a year, they're going to have relatively small data values because, you know, their deadline is not, it's not approaching. Whereas, you know, options that have deadlines by the end of this week or the end of this month, they're going to be more sensitive to, you know, that deadline. So let's, let's take an example of what I'm talking about right now. So let's say there's a stock and it's called XYZ and, you know, it trades for $215 per share. Let's say it also shows strong support at 200. So every time it touches 200, let's say it bounces right back up. With this uh, data gang strategy, we'll sell the right to, you know, sell XYZ at $200 per share. Uh, let's say we sell that put option, we collect a credit of 200. Let's say we buy the put option for 195, which means, you know, we buy the right to sell XYZ stock at $1.95. And let's say for that put option, we paid $150. So the net difference between these two options is $50. So that's $50 we can pocket as long as the stock XYZ closes above $200. And let's say the expir expiration date is, you know, at the end of this week. As long as those constraints are met, we will collect this $50 credit um, by the end of the week. And, you know, to put up this trade, the collateral required is just the difference between these two values multiplied by 100 since each uh, contract represents 100 shares. So that's five times um, 100, which is 500, is going to be required to put up for the collateral of this trade. $50 for 500, that represents a 10% return on investment, you know, by the end of this week, which is far better than what the S&P um, is going to probably do for that month. That's what the S&P does for, you know, a year. But yeah, anyways, let's go on. So let's say the stock XYZ trades at, you know, $215 per share. So it's trading sideways. As long as XYZ does not fall flat like that, and go below 200 we'll make our money so as long as that you know it could dip somewhat it could go sideways it could go up we don't care what the hell it does as long as it does not close below 200 we'll make that credit so that's pretty much what data gang strategy revolves around you know betting that an option is not going to go below or above a certain value by the end of the week and you know you'll collect that premium some example plays uh for this week that i'm making right now um let's take the example of google so if we look at Google's chart for the past, um, you know, past month, past couple months, uh, we see that it shows strong support around this value of, you know, 200 every time or 2000, I should say, every time it bounced, it touched 2000, it just bounced off right there and right there. So there's a strong chance that by the end of this week, Google is probably not going to go below 2000. And so, you know, as a data gang member, I took advantage of that. And this is a trade that resulted. So by taking on that trade where I bet that, you know, Google does not fall below 2000, I think in this value or in this uh, situation, I used 1990. So as long as Google does not fall below 1990, I will make whatever credit, you know, I got by selling the put for 1990 and buying the put for 1980 and I think the difference was $1.65 by the end of this week and so I used two options or I traded two two of those options and uh, it will result in a net credit of $362 so as long as Google does not fall below 1990 by the end of this week 
I'll be able to keep this um, credit difference. So this is probably one of my favorite trades to make of this week, um, Qualcomm. And so we see that Qualcomm has approached the 200 moving average and it's showing, it's showing strong support um, right here. You know, it quickly just bounced up, but it was able to close above that 200 moving average by the next day, you know, which shows sign of strong support. Anyways, so what I did with this trade right here is this. Once again, I opened a uh, data gang strategy spread and I sold the right to sell Qualcomm at a dollar at 128 and I bought the right to sell at 127. So it's literally a dollar spread. And I sold this for a dollar 30, bought it for a dollar, and I was able to pocket the credit difference, which was 30 cents per contract multiplied by 100 stocks, obviously. Um, and I sold five of those. So the total I made was $150. And I'm, remember, I'm betting that the stock of Qualcomm is not going to fall below $128 by the end of this week. I'm making $150 for it. The collateral requirement I had to put up is just the difference between what I sold and the difference between what I bought, which in this case is a dollar multiplied by obviously how many um, contracts or how many stocks a contract has, which is 100 stocks. So, so far 100 times five. So I'm making $150 and I'm putting up my own collateral um, of about 500 which is uh, north of a 20% return, I believe. Um, so this play GME, uh, it's not just uh, the data value, it's also implied volatility. And implied volatility is the, um, it represents, you know, how much a stock goes up or down um, within a set period. Obviously volatile stocks will have a higher implied volatility. And us as traders, that's what we look for. Um, we look for stocks with high implied volatility because that means the premium for those options are going to be a lot more. So let's take the example of GME. So GME for the past, you know, three months, it's been going crazy. It's been going up and down. And if we look at options expiring this um, Friday in particular, and let's say we do the data gaining strategy of selling puts and buying puts, we see that, you know, a put that expires somewhat decently out of the money at like, you know, 175 or so is actually selling for a lot more than what you'd normally expect. It's selling for $1,430, which is extremely high. That's because of the implied volatility. So what I did as a data gang member is I took advantage of this. So the trade I ended up making is I'm betting that GME is not going to fall below $155, which I think is a very reasonable bet given the stock chart. You can see that uh, since the second spike happened, it's showing strong support at uh, $173. So I took on this trade expecting that Jimmy, first of all, is not going to go below 153 or 173. And if it does, um, my put option is below that. So I'll still be, you know, I uh, still have a little bit of a buffer. And so I sold the Jimmy put option for 155 strike price, bought it for 150 strike price. And I pocketed the net difference between these two, which ended up being $115. So as long as Jamie does not go below $155, I'll be able to keep that full credit. Um, $115 divided by the collateral I have to put up for this trade, which is the difference between these two options, $5 times 100 stocks per contract, $500, $115 over $500. That also represents a well over 20% return on investment. And yeah, so that, those are just some of the plays I made this week. Um, some of the plays I'm expecting to make, uh, at least for you know this next coming month, are these three stocks in particular. So let's take a look at them. We have Johnson & Johnson right here. And Johnson & Johnson um, is showing some strong support around the 200 moving average. So I think that could also potentially be a play right here where the 200 moving average is at 152. So I think that also might be a good trade. Um, selling puts at probably, you know, 154 and buying them right back again at 152, the 200 moving average. Um, another one is I double B. So this represents the biotechnology part of the S&P 500 ETF. And so you see that similar setup where you have a strong bounce off the 200 moving average and, you know, you can make a trade of a put spread somewhere along the lines of 150 and 145 pocket the credit and also you have 
uh, TAN, which TAN represents the solar ETF. And you have that same setup right here where it's bouncing off the 200 moving average. And it's it's kind of starting to dip below. Um, obviously, no one can tell the future. But remember, the advantage of these kind of trades that we're making is that we take advantage of the time decay. So no matter if an option goes a little bit below to the side or to, you know, goes up, we will be making that money. So, yep, uh, hopefully you enjoyed that video. Once again, it's ape trading. Woo -hoo. Um, and yeah. Apes strong together.